Not bad for a bunch of assholes who just got lucky. Vox Machina is back and I couldn't be happier. The first three episodes were just plain fun. G'day, welcome to the Nerdy Dad channel and my review and discussion of the first three episodes of season two of Vox Machina. We have Rise of the Chroma Conclave, directed by Young Heller. The Trials of Vasselheim, directed by Alicia Chan. And The Sunken Tomb, directed by Eugene Lee. Okay, for those who are new here, I loved season one of Vox Machina. Look, I periodically try to get into Critical Role, but despite the fact that I love playing RPGs, I found listening to other people play just hard to listen to. I just wanted to follow the story which is exactly what the animated series set in that world gives us. And I'm absolutely in love with these characters and this world. Before we get into the meat of it, here's your spoiler warning. Everybody understands? I'm going to spoil it. Awesome. That's four ancient dragons. They are so screwed. It's been a year for us, but the series picks up exactly where season one left off. We saw the dragons at the end of that season, so we knew they were coming, but I did not expect them to wreck shop quite the way they did. Get behind me! I mean, holy shit, the city is well, what city? They flattened it. All the support it looked like they'd built up at the end of last season is gone. Their fortress gone. Their patron, gone. A lot of potential allies, gone. As far as season openings go, it's awesome. I loved watching the dragons just get to absolutely unleash. And their breath weapons are devastating. I mean, when you play a computer RPG, the dragon's breath is devastating to the party, potentially a couple of NPCs, but you don't normally get to see just what complete destruction they can cause. Our heroes have to teleport to safety twice. First to their fortress where they try to help refugees only to watch many of them die. And then to Briarwood with as many refugees as they can. If anything, the assault on the refugees was even more heartbreaking than the original assault on the city. Vox Machina's defeat was pretty much as absolute as you can get. The first episode ends with Kipi Yannon sending them to Vasselheim, which is where the start of the next episode picks up. The start of the Trials of Vasselheim is necessarily slower than the rise of the Chroma Conclave because, let's face it, having massive dragons blow up a city every episode would eventually get boring, no matter how exciting it was the first time. By the midpoint of the episode though, I was wishing the dragons would turn up and just absolutely wreck shop in the city, at least to the point where the city's leadership needed to ask for help themselves because they were getting their asses handed to them because what an arrogant bunch of assholes. When peril arrives here, our walls stand ready. But until then, this peril is yours alone. Because this isn't a clash between kingdoms where both sides think they're right. This is an existential threat to all civilization on that world. So, you know, their leadership can just go get fucked. I wanna see that city burn. I mean, the common people don't deserve it, of course, but for their leadership to not offer help of any kind is just the worst. Which brings us to the Slayer's Take and tip of the iceberg storytelling that I really want to see in a flashback. I want to see what went down between the Slayer's Take with that Hydra. Meanwhile, Rog's getting the shit beaten out of him by an old priest. I'm real curious as to if and how that's going to come back around. But, you know, we'll deal with it when it does. And it turns out that the Slayers take answers to a Sphinx, who in turn send Vox Machina after a bunch of artifacts. Ostensibly to help take out the dragon, but I'm somewhat suspicious of her motives. Look, anyone else who hasn't watched this play out on Critical Role, let me know in the comments what you think of the Sphinx, and if you think she's on the level, because uh, I'm, I'm not having it. 
The quest from the Sphinx leads us into the third episode, The Sunken Tomb. Look, I don't know if I trust the Sphinx, but Vox Machina are joined by the bounty hunters Zara and Kishor, who they definitely should not trust in their hunt for the vestige of divergence. There is fun action with traps and battles with fish people. That blood drinker sword that Grog picked up from the vampires last year showed us why it's problematic. And Pike gets a little worried about her big friend. More importantly, we got a little more of Vex and Vax's backstory and the bond between the two of them, just in case we weren't going to be invested enough when she succumbs to a magical trap. Stop! You need to wait for my brother! Last season, we got into their backstory enough to know why they don't like dragons. And this season, we're digging into the relationship with their father and with each other. Also, Zara and Kishore ditch them, and Vax finds out that the Sphinxes have a connection to the tomb. As with season one, I'm invested. Vox Machina have come back strong. I'm going to keep discussing the show week by week, so come back and join me then. But in the meantime, why don't we keep the Vox Machina discussion going down in the comments. This is the Nerdy Dad, signing off.